I love coming to speak to, uh, you know, the young people, especially, you know, aspiring to, uh, you know, transition. You know, life's all about transition. You know, everybody, regardless of, you know, what occupation you have or regardless of what you aspire to do, you're going to have to make a transition, you know, at some point, you know, in your life. And uh, as soon as this is over, Pete said the next transition, he's going to take everybody here to lunch. So that's the, oh! that's the next transition for Pete. That's what they told me on the way up here. Yeah. So make sure, you, make sure you hit them up. <laughs> No, but for real, uh, so you know, once again, it's a, it's a privilege and honor to be here. Just going to uh, kind of talk about, you know, my life, my background, you know, how I, uh, like Pete said, how I started getting into the media um, after playing football. So, you know, to start off, uh, Jason McKee, once again, played for, played for NFL for nine years, uh, played with the Cowboys, the Bears for seven years, and then finished up in Baltimore. You know, I retired after that my last year in Baltimore. From a small town, nothing like Chicago, uh, Pensacola, Florida. I don't know if you, anybody have ever heard of it. Real small. We just, uh, you know, I just found out when I was there, we didn't really have no taxi service. We don't have no subways or anything like that. So, you know, now anytime I get a chance here in Chicago, I, I take the train everywhere because we I ain't have that growing up. So it's like it's a big thing for me. So I love the city of Chicago. It's been great to me. Plan, and my plan was if I was fortunate enough was to you know go on to play football. If I was able to do that. And then after I finished playing football, I was like, hey, you know, if I'm not going to be playing football, the least I can do is talk about it. So that's what really made me want to focus, you know, all my efforts into radio and, and TV. And I don't know what, you know, everybody here wants to do, whether it's radio, TV, but, you know, I feel like, you know, here, this place here is, is a great opportunity for a lot of you guys because, you know, you get the hands-on training, you get to be in front of the camera, you get to be on the radio. And uh, even, even at the school that I went to, we didn't have – we had a, it was a big communication school as far as media, but we didn't have some of the things you guys have here at ICB. So I, I think this is a great opportunity for a lot of you guys. But just going back to the transition from playing uh, professional sports and then going to the media world, it's a uh, it's a it's a big parallel for, from playing sports to to transition into the media world it's, or the corporate world or wherever you guys want to be. You know, in the NFL, when you first start out, you're a rookie. You know, so you go from you know getting with the team that you're on, you, you start from the bottom. You know, you start off going to practice, bringing the donuts, bringing the coffee, you know what I'm saying? And then you transition, you continue to work hard, you earn your stripes, and then you earn playing time and you start playing. And then you're the guy telling all the rookies, hey, don't forget my donuts tomorrow, you know, don't forget my coffee tomorrow, you know. But it's the same thing in the media world. You know, you start off at the bottom. You know, I, I started off uh, when I was playing, uh, just doing different shows uh, up at Hallis Hall where we practice at with, with radio. I would always say, hey, Need somebody to come on the radio, interview some of the guys in the locker room. You know, I'm your guy. But I knew that was a great way for me to kind of get my foot in the door and to show them that I was capable of doing it while I was still playing. So I was using my leverage while I was playing to actually help me practice. So that way I knew when I was done, I was, it would be an easier transition. I would have something to show for it. You know, not saying that as soon as I was done, I was handed a job. No, but I would have something to show them saying, hey, look. You know, I can do this. I can interview people. I can do this radio stuff like everybody else is doing. So, you know, I, I was able to do, you know, a lot of different shows. Um, I was able to do a show called Chicago Huddle with uh, Ryan Severini, who is now the uh, co-host of Windy City Live. I did that for two years with him, just kind of interviewing guys on, on ABC7, which was, which was big for me because it gave me, you know, a lot of film and, and it helped build my uh, resume and portfolio. And, uh, you know, that, that, that transition helped me a lot. And just having guys like, you know, Ryan Severini is, is kind of guys being mentors that would help me, you know, if I had questions or, you know, what can I do better? How do you practice? You know, all those things are, are, are things that you got to do because the bottom line is whether you're playing a professional sport or you're in the corporate world or, in the, or you're in the broadcasting world, you're competing against the next man. I mean, in football, you're competing for a starting job. You know, the person next to you, he may be your best friend, but y'all may play the same position. So, you know, what's going to separate you two? You know, you may run the same 40 times. You may bench press the same amount, but what's going to separate you? Okay, I do, I catch the ball better than he does. You know, I do one little thing better than he does, so that way I'm going to be on the field. You know, same thing in the media world. You know, if, if we do the same thing, we both have the same radio show, what's going to separate our radio show? Okay, I'm practicing more. You know, I'm going to go out there and get the better guest than he is, you know. I'm going to have interesting topics, not make it boring. That's going to separate me from the next man. You know, you two may have the same radio show, like I said, but while he's sleeping, you know what I'm saying, what's going to separate you is you're going to be at home practicing. You're going to be, at, be up at home, you know, writing out your show, you know, writing up your topics, making sure you have the right topics that Pete, 
you know, your audience so that way they'll call in and build your ratings. While he's sleeping, you're doing that. So therefore, that's going to put you ahead of him. Because at the end of the day, every, life is all about competition. You know, if it wasn't, you know, everybody would be rich. You know, everybody would have everything they wanted. You know, but and not saying that if you work hard, you'll get everything. But, you know, I, I'm a person who, you know, I think I'm the testament of hard work. You know, I was never handed anything. You know, even in the NFL, I was undrafted. Felt like I should have been drafted, wasn't drafted. Had to go out there and prove myself. And that's what I was able to do. And just like the media, it's just, it's just steps. Like I said, I uh, started off, you know, doing different shows while I was playing. Uh, my first radio job was out in Lake County, a small station, uh, 1220 AM. Me and Nathan Vasher did that for like a year, and it was, it was awful. <laughs> it was awful. We hated it. But at the same time, you know, we probably had about five listeners. I don't know how many listeners we had. But at the same time, you know, it helped us practice. You know, it helped us learn how to work the board, learn how to write our own show, learn how to read a, you know, a show clock. You know, when we go to breaks, when we transition to breaks, all that stuff helped prepare us. We left there, and we came here to get more practice. You know, we were right down. What's that? Just right State. there on State Street. Yeah, right there doing the show there. We did that for about a year, just gaining more practice. You know, continue to work on our craft. You know, just like all of you are doing here by you know coming here every day, going to class, and and it just doesn't just doesn't start here. You know, you got to continue to do that at home. You know, I, I would stand in the mirror and just you know talk to myself. You know, talk about topics and break down topics in front of the mirror. I mean, it may sound dumb, but you know, when, when you're doing that or if you're in front of a camera, it makes it easier because you don't sat there and talked about something. You know, you know, you know, you can you can write out, you can write down a word football and you just talk about football or write down, you know, anything, whatever your show's about, you know, comedy, write comedy and just start talking about comedy in front of the mirror. And all that stuff just kind of prepares you and gets you more comfortable, you know, to, uh, and it helps you, you know, build your it helps you build your brand and be more comfortable. So that way, when you do. You know, get that opportunity to, to sit in, you know, to have your show or, or you have an interview on camera or if they give you an opportunity to have you on a radio show, you be prepared. Because, I mean, life's, I mean, it's all about working hard, but you got you to gotta be able to work hard and then use that so when you do get your opportunity, you, know, you can kick the door down. You know what I'm saying? Because not a lot of, not a lot of people are going to get that opportunity or not a lot of people are prepared for that opportunity when it comes about. You know, you can say, oh, I want to be the best radio host. I want to be the best broadcaster in the world. They give, okay, we'll sit down at this desk and, you know, broadcast the, the Bulls game last night. You sit there and you're like this, and you're out of there, next person up. You know what I'm saying? When well, you should have been prepared for that moment. You never know when that moment's going to come. And like I said, it's all about transition. So I don't know how many of you are about to graduate from here, but, you know, some of you are already starting to make that transition. If some of you have internships. Some of you may have your own shows right now. And that's good because that's going to help your transition for when you graduate from here. You know what I'm saying? It's all about transition. I've seen guys, you know, transition from making millions of dollars, transition into being broke, transition into just doing nothing, you know, transition into to calling me, asking me to borrow money when I'm like, man, you was making more money than me. We were playing. What you, you know, what'd you do with it? And it's, and it's sad. You know, some people can't handle transition, but the bottom line is everybody's going to have to go through it. And like I said, life's all about transition. And, and you know, you guys are making a, are taking a big step by being here. You know, and, and I think it's good that you guys are here. How many, how many of you uh, do radio? Everybody. Okay. Yeah, how many of y'all got your own shows and stuff? Okay, good, good. Okay, good, good. How many of y'all do, like, TV? Or? Okay. How many of y'all, like, behind the camera producing and stuff like that? Okay. See, everybody, see, that's good. That's good. How many, uh, when does everybody graduate? No, November. Okay. Okay. So y'all got your plan already? Y'all started, you got your plan in order? Somewhat. Something like that. That's fine. I mean, but you know what? The good thing about a plan is it's just, it's just a guideline. You know what I'm saying? Your plan doesn't always, you know, work out. You know, I mean, I, I've had plenty of plans. I've written down as like, man, I should have been here by now. You know, what's up? You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't see people broadcasting and, and, you know, talking about, I do sports. So I don't know what all you guys do, but, you know, I see guys, broadcasting about football who never even played the game, you know, let alone can't even boil a mouthpiece. But they're on there talking about it, you know what I mean? I get frustrated, but at the same time, you can't get frustrated. You know, that person may have, you know, read a, a, a football one-on-one -on -one book and put in his time and then, you know, got in front of the camera. You know, and some people got to take a different route. So I got to show that, you know, I'm more than just an athlete, that I can actually, 
you know, be on air and, and have my own show at the same time. So, you know, with all that being said, uh, you know, currently I'm a radio weekend host for 87.7 uh, The Game Chicago, owned by WGN, and it's, uh, it's a new station. Um, just started about a month ago, actually. And uh, they got a lot of guys over there who's been in media for a long time. And, you know, it's an all-sports station, which is, which is huge, because prior to that I was at uh, 89 WLS for a year, and it was all politics. And, I, and our show went from, from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. on Sunday night, which I couldn't stand. But I, had, <laughs> I couldn't stand it, but I had to do it, and it was a good opportunity because it was a big station. And like I said, it gave me more practice. And then it showed people that, hey, you know, wow, he got hired for this job. He is a, you know, a legit radio host. He's not just an athlete on the air just you know, talking garbage. He knows you know, what he's talking about. He knows how to conduct the show. And that actually you know, got me the, the job over at... Um, 87 7 the game and uh, you know it's been good you know like I said it's always a work in progress you know like I said you're always gonna have to work to continue to better your craft because there's always gonna be somebody out there that's gonna want your job or somebody out there that's gonna think they're better than you or you know the employer that you get they're always gonna be trying to find somebody to replace you you know it's the same thing as sports you know that's why I say you know sports in the corporate world or the broadcasting world it's all the same thing it's all the same concept instead of you actually catching the football, you know, you're holding the microphone, but they're still going to try to find somebody younger. They can pay less, and they can do the same thing as you to replace you. And, uh, you know, that's why you got to continue to, to work on your, ca your craft, build your brand, and continue to outwork the next person next to you. You know, and, and if I can give you any advice, I mean, that would be my advice. You know, hard work always pays off, and I've seen it over and over again, and uh, it's definitely worked for me. Like I said, I'm a I'm a small kid from a small town. We only, we only even, we have, I don't even think we have a sports radio station, you know, where I grew up at. But, you know, like I said, just. Do they have a radio station? Yeah, they do have a radio station, but not sports radio. We do got a radio station. But, uh, yeah, man, so work hard. You guys are in a perfect situation. You guys have everything at your disposal, man. You're already on the right track. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to come here and talk to you guys and just say continue working. And, uh, you know, it'll pay off, man. So just open up for um, question and answer. You said what now? Seven things. Seven? <laughs> Just seven, man? <laughs> you, must, you, must have, you must have in your back, po a back pocket a list of the exact seven things, huh? Oh, man, seven things. Man, do I have seven things? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, it's, probably, it's probably more than seven, but I mean, it probably is. I mean, the first one I would say is seven things be successful. Just give us two. No, I, got, I probably got seven. See if I can give y'all seven. And broadcast. Make it so broad. Make it, make it, don't make and it broad. Broadcast, okay. Successful. All right. Successful. Okay. And broadcast, and I would say hard work, dedication, because to be dedicated, you have to be dedicated to do things that you don't want to do. You know what I'm saying? You may, you may just be, want to be a sports broadcaster, but you may have to go over there and somebody may say, hey, we want you to come here and do the news. So you have to be dedicated and open minded to do that. Um, Number three, versatile. You know, just because, like, like me, I had I, I was football all day, football, football. You know, I had football. So then when when I got to WLS, I was like, yeah, we, we want you to break down the Blackhawks game. It's like Blackhawks, I ain't never watched a hockey game in my life. What you mean, like Blackhawks? But you know, I had to start watching them. I had to start studying. I actually, had to learn the rules of hockey. I Man, I didn't know no rules in hockey. But you got to be versatile because you don't want to be a guy in which they say, hey, we can only hire him for for football. I mean, they want to be able to, they want to pay you for one thing, but make you do a lot of different things. So obviously you got to be versatile. Um, you got to be competitive because you want to outwork your competition. You know, you want to outwork the, the man next to you. You want to outwork the next show. Even though you're on the same station and you're all on the same team, you're all under the same, you know, the same, uh, the same label or, or the same station, you still want to outwork them because you want your ratings to be higher than theirs. So that way when you go to your boss and be like, hey, man, we had five million listeners yesterday. I'm getting paid this much per hour. You know what I'm saying? I think uh, I deserve a raise. If not, I'm going next door. They already said they was going to give me that raise. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I would say, you know, comp competition. How many is that? Four? I got three more? Three more? Let me see. Uh, yeah, practice. Like I said, practice. You know, continue to work on your craft. Continue to build your brand. Uh, creativity. Continue to be creative. You don't want your show to be the same as, 
you know, the one that comes on before you or the one that comes on after you, I mean, nobody's going to want to listen. And he's like, I mean, they're saying the same thing over and over and over again, you know, every hour. I mean, there are some stations like that out here. And I don't want to mention no names or discredit any of the stations, but a lot of stations just, just sit there and recite stats over and over again, and that's how you can tell somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about. You know, this person had three touchdowns, and he had 200 yards rushing. Uh, uh, uh. Like, come on, man, anybody can say that. You know, I can look it up on the computer and just say that. But how did he get, how did he, how did he get those yards? You know, why did those touchdowns come about? That's what the people want to hear, you know. So I would say creativity. Was that six? Yeah. And the last, <laughs> and the last one, I would say uh, focus. Stay focused. Um, you know, there may be outside influences that may deter you. And, uh, you know, like I said before, you may have to go a different route. You may be a, a news person. They may want you to work in sports or vice versa. So I would say focus, you know, because you, know, you may have to go a route that you don't want to go to get to where you want to get to. But at the end of the day, you got that one goal in mind, you know, that pinnacle that you want to reach. But you may have to take a different route to get there. So I would say stay focused on the task or your goals that you have at hand. So that would be my seven. Thank you. No problem. How do you prepare for your shows? Man, Good question. Yeah, a lot of work, man. You know, I just, uh, you know, since I'm a weekend guy, it's, it's a little bit easier than a, than a weekly guy, than an everyday guy, because everyday guy, you know, they've got to prepare each and every day. Even if there isn't a lot of sports news on that day, they still got to come up with, if they're on for two hours, they got to come up with two hours worth of material. Me, I didn't seen everything that happened during the week. I didn't heard their shows and heard what they're commenting on. You know what I'm saying? So then I have a, a three or four hour show. I'm like, man, I got everything to talk about. You know, the Bulls play, the Hawks play, you know, the Cubs opening day, you know, different Go Cubs. different sports topics that happen, you know. Johnny Manziel then 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 stole some more money, you know what I mean? He got so many different topics to talk about, so it's easy and a lot of times we run out of time. We have so much stuff to talk about, we usually run out of time. So, you know, we try to we try to keep it uh you know, we don't, we don't like to just sit there and just recite the same thing. We like to give our own opinions on it. I like, to, I like to shake things up a little bit. I like to, you know, crack on different guys. But like I said, for me, I personally, I never, I try not to degrade, you know, I try not to degrade guys because a lot of these shows around here in Chicago, a lot of these sports stations, they get their ratings by just talking trash about, you know, different players or different topics when they don't really know what they're talking about. You know, yeah, a bunch of different ones. So I try not to, if I do it, I do it in a constructive way. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, he knows he should have caught that pass. Or, you know, Derrick Rose knows he wants to be playing right now. You know, I know he's hurt. You know, some guys say, oh, he's scared. He's so sorry. He's this and that. He's, he's terrible. Well, how was he the first pick in the draft? And how, you know, if he's bad, he just got hurt. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's how we prepare. As far as broadcasting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I mean, making, making, you got to make what you're doing stand out. Cause this, I don't know how many radio stations is it, it is in the country. I mean, it's thousands, hundreds of them. I mean, anybody can do their own radio show now. You know, as opposed to back in the day, you know, you had to have a station, you had to have a studio. Now you can, you know, have your own radio show from your laptop. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta, you gotta make your show stand out. And a lot of times in the sports world. Everybody's talking about the same thing, you know what I'm saying? Because it's 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 what happens in sports is, is breaking news. So everybody's gonna be talking about breaking news. But the way you're competitive with it is, you know, they may break it down one way and present it one way. We're gonna break it down another way, but we're also gonna break it down in a way that the listener will want to stay tuned in. You want the listeners to stay tuned in to your station, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's where the competitive competitiveness comes in. And I want to make my show better than, than the show that came on before me or the show that's coming on after me. You know, I, want to, I want people to, to know when my show comes on, hey, this show comes on at this time, we're going to listen. You know? And that's just by being creative, like I said, you know, uh, coming up with different topics, different ways you can present stuff, and having like, you know, different guests and, and presenting it in a way that people want to stay tuned in. So you got to be, you got to be competitive with the other people, but you also got to be competitive with yourself. You, know, you say, how can I get better? to make my show better, to make people, you know, stay tuned in to my station. Um, relating back to the question he asked you, so do you write and produce, like, your own shows? Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of shows are, like, yeah. not written and produced by them. Like, yeah. they're given a script to read off mm -hmm. of and they, like... No, we write, me and my co-host, um, he's actually, my co-host has been in media for a lot longer than I have. His name is Jason Gosh. He's on a Chicago um, Tribune Live. If you ever see that, he's on there like during the week. But 
me and him write our own show. And that was a big thing, um, you know, when I got into this business. I didn't want nobody to write no script for me, especially when it came to sports. I'm like, what can you write better than me that I can't present? You know what I'm saying? Whether it's, I mean, whether it's football, hockey, even though I may not know hockey like the back of my hand or baseball, I mean, it's all the same thing. You know, you know what, you know what that athlete's going to, through because you know, if you played at that same level as that person. Yeah, I wasn't swinging a bat, you know, or, or, or trying to catch pucks or nothing like that, but as a professional athlete, you know what it takes, you know what you got to do, you know the time that you put in. So I was like, why am I going to have, you know, this guy who, I mean, no disrespect, I don't, you know, who's the captain of the chess team write a script for me about sports when I can, you know, I can write my own script, you know, so that was, that was one of the main things when I started doing my show. I wanted to make sure I did my own script. So and we do our own script, we book our own guests, um, and we set our own, well, the commercial breaks, a lot of times they have set commercial breaks, but you know, you can, you know, we work on board and stuff like that, and, uh, and that's how we do it. Right, so are you-